to the semifinals and lost, and they now will want to finish this tournament on a high. They want to leave with a win. It's always better to leave uh, on the back of a win than a loss. And uh, here's what we have going on today. Follow, followed by this game will be uh, Slovenia's first ever appearance in a Eurobasket final, taking on a, a team that's made it before Serbia. So that'll be an entertaining one. Well, I'm Jeff Taylor, joined by Josh Davis. And uh, you know what? It's all about rebounding. It's about forgetting uh, about what happened two days ago and coming out and putting on the performance of the tournament for both of these teams. Exactly. You know, rebounding, yes, in a literal sense, but just from an emotional standpoint, how do you bounce back from, you know, for what Serbia was a pretty tough loss. They gave themselves a chance to win that game against Serbia in the semifinal, but Spain pretty much getting blown out by Slovenia in that second half. You know, which team is going to be more resilient? Which team is going to have more desire? Which team wants to win this bronze medal? Who, who does it matter to? Uh, we assumed it would be both teams. You know, like you said, it's better to leave on a on a winning note. Uh, but these two teams have to play a tough game, and they know that. So we're excited. Hello, everybody. You're looking live inside the Sinan Erdem Arena. It's the third place game at FIBA Eurobasket 2017 between Russia and Spain. And Russia, their players being introduced here uh, to the fans. Alexei Shved uh, leading the way out. One of the star performers of this tournament, without question, has really uh, been just been outstanding. I'd be I'd be awfully surprised if he didn't find his way onto the uh, onto the All Star Five. Uh, but we'll have to wait and see. Timothy Moskov there. Um, this is a Russia team, Josh, that I think if it were to leave uh, the Eurobasket with, with third place, the spot on the podium, uh, it would be almost a sense of mission accomplished. Yeah, I agree. I mean, obviously, we followed this team the entire way as they had their group games in Istanbul. You know, Coach Bazarevich pretty much said that their goal was to get to the semifinals. They accomplished that goal. We weren't, weren't able to kind of uh, move on. But like you said, a bronze medal is a, is a healthy finish for the, for the Russian squad. This is a healthy finish for a team that didn't get out of the group phase at the last two year baskets and just had to qualify uh, to play in this one. For Spain, uh, there's no doubt uh, there's some lingering disappointment. Uh, just as happened last year in Rio de Janeiro, they didn't make it to the final there when they lost to the United States. This time, it was Slovenia that upended them in the semifinals. And there was no doubt about it, folks. I mean, Slovenia won decisively uh, against a Spanish team that is accustomed uh, to playing for titles, especially in Europe. Uh, so they were able to... Uh, to, to bounce back back in 2013 when Pau Gasol was not in the team and and win the bronze medal in Slovenia and they'll try to do the same thing tonight so we're gonna have a pause in the commentary now for the national anthems uh, for both Russia and Spain
Spain huddle up after the national anthem and Russia do as well at the other end. And now they will come and uh, meet each other. And the coaches, uh, Sergio Scariolo of Spain and Sergei Bazarevich of Russia. And uh, we'll also take a look at the refereeing crew, Leandro Lascano of Argentina in the middle, Manuel Mazzoni of Italy on the right, and Tomas Yasevicius of Lithuania on the right. So. Tony on the left, rather, and uh, Yasevicius on the right. This is my favorite part of the broadcast. I'm going to turn it over to you, Josh. I personally like the basketball game as well, but when it comes to the rosters, I do let them know who to look out for. Of course, Alexi Shved leads the way for this Russian team. 25 points a game, six assists. Where he goes, they go. Can he do it for 40 minutes, though, against obviously one of the better teams in the competition? Uh, in the backcourt, he's got a lot of help. Dmitry Kostov, D. Vitaly Fritzen getting the start today over Dmitry Kulagin, who has a bad ankle. Ivlev in the starting lineup for Moscow, which is very, very interesting. And then Andre Voronsevic, who does a little bit of everything for Russia. Rebound, steals, blocks, can hit the perimeter shot as well. Meanwhile, for Spain, again, a lot of names that people are familiar with. You see Paul Gasol there walking in the layup lines. Uh, he leads the way for this team, especially in scoring, but he's got his big you know, little, big little brother, Mark, uh, inside. Ricky Rubio, Sergio Rodriguez on the perimeter. You know, this is one of the last, probably the last game in a Spanish jersey for Juan Navarro and Paul Gasol, potentially, at least in terms of a you know, highly competitive game. So you expect them to go out on a very, very high note. And we see Navarro still in the starting lineup, despite his struggles. Ricky Rubio, San Materio, and then the Gasol boys inside. Again, we expect their experience to really, really step up against Slovenia. Slovenia's youth and in just all-out play was just a little bit too much. This game probably favors Russia a bit more, and you see the split screen here. Mark Gasol has been an absolute beast these last couple of games, averaging 20 points and 10 rebounds, also hitting five threes in those games. And he's also protecting the rim for, for Spain. Meanwhile, Moscow coming off the bench. He's been consistent. He's been scoring every single game, getting double figures, obviously killing them inside, but has a soft touch on the free throw line. So Spain has to be very careful not to put him on the line. So, yeah, Juan Carlos Navarro, this is it for him. And it remains to be seen, really, about Pau Gasol, or if you called him the other day, Pau Gazelle. I thought you were forgot about that by now. <laughs> After he was running uh, the length of the court for a, uh, for a fast break. Sir, Sir here was Gariolo. It's uh, another attempt to get to the podium uh, with Spain's national team and sharpening the focus uh, for this one and again putting the disappointment of their loss to Slovenia behind them. Sergei Bazarevic has done well in his first uh, Euro basket. Drawing up the plays, managing the games, and it's a, a vast, uh, a huge change uh, from two years ago when in Montpellier. They won just that one game and did not get out of the group. So to actually be fighting for a spot on the podium, it's uh, quite an achievement for him and for Russia. Welcome to Istanbul, folks. It's the start of the third place game between Spain and Russia at PB Eurobasket 2017. We are underway in Spain, uh, having first possession here. Ball knocked out of bounds. Remember, this is a rematch uh, of sorts. Uh, these two teams faced off in the Eurobasket 2007 title game. And that one was played in Madrid, and it was won by a single point by Russia. Yeah, the 10 year anniversary of what's perhaps Russia's Biggest win in the last 30, 40 years. 
here. Link on the sideline for this one yet again. Well, turnover and uh, a little bit out of control. Uh, Prison. Ball goes out of bounds. So obviously, Russia making a couple of changes to the starting lineup, bringing Mozgov off the bench. We've seen that a few times in the tournament already. Potentially a save some fouls, but also to tire out the Gasol brothers as an unforced turnover. Yep, over and back. See the field goal percentages for both of the, these teams uh, in this tournament. Of course, Russia and Sergei Bazarevich there in your screen played in Group D, which was in the uh, Istanbul, in the Asian part of Istanbul. Spain played their group games in Cluj, Napoca, in Romania. And they went unbeaten there. Russia finished third in their group. But with four wins. Inside it goes, and Pal Gasol puts it up off the glass and in. You know, Spain will always be able to take advantage of a mismatch. And Kostov got switched off on Sapal there. A nice feed inside, and the reverse finishes. Rubio putting a great ball pressure. And Kostov. Tries to fight around the screen and picks up the foul. Rubio coming in with two steals per game, so he has been quite active defensively. This was the look. First points of the game, down to Pau Gasol. Became the Eurobasket's all-time leading scorer uh, in, when they were still in Romania, passing uh, Tony Parker, uh, the France great, who retired from the national team after last year's Olympics. Both this guy's player from San Antonio. Now the ball goes out of bounds. Uh, Varsevich couldn't uh, catch it and keep his feet in, so it goes back to Spain. You see Shred putting a little bit too much on that pass. Deep lift. I've been very aggressive. And Rubio bumped by Ivlev up top. Ivlev is in there for his defense. Not much of an offensive player in this tournament. He's played well in his uh, limited minutes. San Amaterio. Backs up Shred. Well, San Amaterio has it again. He's going to have to put it up. He turns. Puts up a little runner on the baseline. What a move from Fernando San Emeterio. Yeah, and you see them going right at Alexi Shved in the post. Now Shved blows right past San Emeterio, then passes over to Fridzen. Shved from the left. It's good. Picks right up where he left off against Serbia. Yeah, coming off that 33-point performance, you saw the great ball movement instigated firstly by Shved's penetration. Ball makes his way around the perimeter and gets back into his hands for the corner three. And now it's uh, Rubio trying the corner three but misses. And the rebound and put back in. Santa Materio is fouled, so he'll go to the line for an N1. Shved picks up the personal. Here it is, the scrap. And sure enough, Shved reached in. It looked like he uh, got Santa Materio on the arm. Santa Materio, obviously, uh, very well-known player in Spanish basketball. He's played for the big clubs, Barcelona, most recently Valencia, helping them win the title. They won their first ever uh, Spanish league title. And uh, after not making the Olympic squad last year, Santa Materia has come back into the team and started. Mark a little pump fake. And turns it over. Yeah, it's always tough to make a bounce pass to a cutting big. You usually want to see that thrown towards the rim. But again, Ivlev not really looking to score, mostly just to rebound and defend. Now the dump down low to Mark Gasol turns and scores. And that's going to get Timothy Mozgov off the bench for Russia. All of Spain's points so far in the lane. Shved left open, that's off to the left, and Rubio gets the rebound in the corner. Gets it back to Gasol into his brother Mark, and he is fouled. So Russia pick up their third foul. It's on Fridzen. 
And then Moscow will now check into the game. See Christen already jumped before Gasol had the ball in his hands. Let's not forget, both these teams well, obviously not rushing with two losses, but Spain just has that one loss, the one kind of poor performance. The Gasol brothers have been pretty dominant throughout the tournament, taking turns punching teams inside. So a lot of Spanish media have uh, traveled to Istanbul to cover this national team. You see his numbers, Mark Gasol. You might hear some of them close the mic behind us. They're quite loud. We're excited. Spain have uh, been battling for the medals for really the last 16 years. It's been uh, the most consistent program in Europe. And ball goes out of bounds back over to Spain. Again, you saw in that possession, Shved able to break down the defense, create an open shot for Kostov. Can knock it down. Kostov has been very, very good this tournament. One of the pleasant surprises for Russia. San Antonio. In fact, it's been even longer than that. Spain uh, getting to the podium in 99. Here's uh, Marcus Saul and the foul, I think, on Voronchevich boxing out. What's this? It's locked up in there with Gasol. And uh, no shots. That's foul number four, though. And uh, Spain is going to be getting into the bonus here pretty soon. Still with more than six minutes remaining for Russia. Fouling a lot. Gasol turns and hits the backboard. Catches a finger in the eye, possibly in Schmid. Races to the other end and scores. Picture perfect fast breakup from Russia off the missed shot. Now Mark Gasol has it. Oh, look at him change hands in the air and score with his left. Yeah, it seemed like he almost fumbled the ball on the way up, which conveniently found it in his left hand. Wow. And so skilled. Nice control. Orange Savage, no look over to Kostov on the right. And the pass, or the rebound batted over to Rubio, now into the hands of Labamba. Juan Carlos Navarro, this will be his last Euro basket. And Fernando de San Mateo, Fernando de San Mateo off the back of the iron. Hey, Russia love the threes, don't they? They pass up a lot of layup attempts. Well, here they're going to take one, and they get swatted by uh, Mark Gasol, as you said, second most blocks in the year basket. And Rubio pulls up at the line. Shred slowing it down a little bit. And they missed Moskov a couple of times. A lot of opportunity for those drives. Here he is. Didn't miss him there, and he puts it up off the glass. Great cross screen action to free up the big man, Moskov, inside. Spain kind of a breakdown defensively. John Sastre is going to come into the game for Spain. Been sort of a, I guess you'd call him a revelation on the international scene this summer. He played with Spain's youth teams. Here's Gasol, and then loses control of it as he goes up. And uh, Gasol appealing uh, for a foul to be called. There have been it's been a, a common theme for Spain, really, since the quarterfinals. Watch this. No, not there. That's the foul. You can see Navarro get uh, extended minutes. You see the nice block there for Gasol. Yeah. Oskov had his right arm straight up. Yeah, we've seen that called numerous times. Gasol's. Is don't it a lack of respect or just an unfortunate coincidence that they don't get the foul calls? Who knows? Hey, 
Ross right known for his Red defense. Pulls up for three. And then Rubio boxes out for Savage. Smith, kind of the opposite of a fadeaway on that three, leaning heavily. Sastre still managed to contest it. Now you see Rodriguez come in. Rubio and Hernan Gomez for Navarro. So Navarro goes out. Rubio goes out. Sergio Rodriguez, who will be playing for Suska Moscow uh, this coming season, going up against some of his teammates. Uh, Kulagan, despite his uh, ankle injury, is in the game. I don't think Kulagan has a team yet, does he? Yeah, he's playing for, uh, for a contract as well. Gasol turns. Little fadeaway. Uh, Varsavich grabs the ball. Hands it off to Shred. Oh, nice move. Kurbanov, another Seska Moscow player. Kulagin. And has the ball knocked away. Maybe a little overpassing yeah, there. Russia passing up so many shot opportunities. And that time Kulagin knocks out of Rodriguez's hands, but there's a foul. The number of times that Russia was able to get Spain off its feet. Likely not to shoot. See the, the hands on the end there. So Gasol takes a seat. Uh, some people probably, when he hangs him up, will call, will call him the greatest ever European player. It'll be interesting to see. You've got so many legends in European basketball from the Nowitzkis. Draza Petrovic's, Arvidas Sabonis's. I'm, I'm pretty sure some, a lot of people are going to be calling Pau Gasol the greatest when you consider MVP of the World Cup 2006, twice year basket MVP. Another time, member of the All Star Five. I mean, he's been. Yes, in terms led. of FIBA competitions, it's, it's incredible. Yeah, just the titles alone, aside from the individual accolades, kind of puts him up there. And then you can't forget about his NBA championship as well. Oh, yeah. If you, yeah, just strictly, I'm thinking in terms of uh, right. international basketball. Ball goes out of bounds. Also, the sheer fact that he pretty much put Spanish basketball on the map. I think so. Well, a lot. I mean, yeah, combine it going to the NBA. Here's Schved right, right. for three. It's good. And Lexi Schved. Mark Gasol gets the foul. Certainly Gasol's uh, introduction to the NBA kind of uh, ushered in a new era of uh, Spanish basketball really going to the top. Because very soon after what, he got to the final of the Eurobasket in 2003 where they lost to Lithuania. And then 2004 Olympics, they went unbeaten the preliminary round before falling to the USA in the quarters. 2005, he didn't play. Uh, recovering from injury, but 2006 was the world title win, and that really triggered kind of a, a rush for the medals for Spain. Never been able to solve the USA nemesis have Spain, but they've uh, beaten pretty much everybody else. Kulagin is... Uh, had one of his most famous moments against the USA uh, at the under-19 World, World Championship. And now the ball thrown past Shved out of bounds, and it'll be Spain ball. A little bit of miscommunication there. Kurbanov was playing really good basketball in the group phase, but hasn't really uh, maintained it in the, in the knockout round. Yeah, he's done it pretty much. His, his job now has been, you know, putting ball pressure on the guards. But yeah, in the group phase, you saw him posting up, hitting threes. Has not scored in the last couple of games, really. It's the rebound here, though. Mark Gasol shoots the jumper. So Spain up by seven. Low scoring game so far, and Mark Gasol knocks it away, and then he is tripped up, and it's an unsportsmanlike foul on Kurbanov. And Mark Gasol gets up kind of holding his left ankle, and that doesn't look good, folks. It's just, uh, you saw him pound the hardwood with his fists 
And uh, the last thing he wants to do is uh, injure his ankle. Here we go. Oh, yeah, his left foot kind of twisted as Kurbanov uh, dove on the floor for the ball, made contact with Mark Gasol. Yeah, and you appreciate a great hustle by Kurbanov, but kind of a dangerous play as you go for the ball near the guy's legs. Great hands by Mark Gasol, though, able to strip the ball from Alexi Shred. He wants to stay in to take his free throws. Expect really Hernan Gomez to into the game. Yeah. Well, it's unfortunate. You hate, especially the last game of the summer. He's been playing well. Mark Gasol. So he goes to the line. He's going to take the unsportsmanlike. Fouls on Gasol. Unsportsmanlike foul. And, uh, and then Spain will maintain possession. I would imagine he'll come right out after this. As you see Willie Hernan Gomez coming off the bench. Ankles retaped, and he had to. He actually knocked the ball away, triggered the break. So he's going to kind of walk gently off the floor. So that could galvanize the Spanish team, as you never want to see one of your brothers go down. And if you're Scariolo, how he's going to go to the locker room? Yeah, how do like. you kind of uh, manage this? Yeah, so Marcus all goes to the changing room, and we'll see. See if he comes back into the game. Might not want to risk it. Anyway, Rodriguez pulls up for three. And Oriola challenging for the offensive rebound. I would imagine Oriola will have a big role for Spain moving forward. Here's Kulagan. Now, what a spin from Mozgov. Then he lost the ball. And Oriola has it. It's too quick for his own feet. And An offensive oh, foul called on Willie Aaron and Gomez. And again, this Russia team is at its best, kind of obvious, but when all these players are clicking, you can see Zubkov. Yeah. yeah, he was, he hooked him at first, reached around him, then he was getting a handful of jersey. We've seen multiple games where guys like Zubkov and Kurbanov or Unsevich, the role players, have really stepped up. And we've seen games where they've gone very quiet as well. The ups and downs of the tournament. Three-pointer, Zubkov continues to be a factor for Russia. He came off the bench and played exceptionally well as they uh, came back and really challenged Serbia at the end of their semifinal. And the jump shot is good. First field goal for Spain in over five minutes, obviously doing it at the foul line as well. Russia yet to attempt a free throw, while Spain has nine for nine in this first quarter. has it, final seconds, kicking off the clock, turns, and doesn't get it off in time, doesn't get it to Zubkov in time. They, they're not going to count that. So Spain will go over to the bench at the end of the first quarter, leading 21 to 13. See right here. Yeah, caught Light. the ball. It was off, got it off way too late. So Spain in the third place game lead at 21 to 13 over Russia.
interesting. Uh, Russia had lived and died by the three-point shot for much of this year basket. They made three, but they still trail by eight. Spain getting the line and making nine free throws, Josh. Yeah, you see Spain obviously coming out with much more aggression in that uh, first quarter, while Russia kind of overpassing at times. Different guys passing up shots, almost like I don't want to be the one to make a mistake. And again, when this last kind of game, there's nothing to lose. You might as well leave it all out on the court. So you know that Shved's going to do that for you, but he needs a lot more help. He does have the eight points, but so far only Zubkov and Mozgov with field goals. And we talked about that doing that against Serbia. They only had four guys score in the first half, while Serbia had nine. So that's just an example of different guys stepping up. So second quarter action underway. And Zubkov again rolls into the lane and scores. He's become more aggressive as the tournament's gone on, even though he might not play all the minutes. Kostov called for the reach. Watch the physicality there. And uh, Rodriguez uh, looked like he may have caught Kostov in the face. And Gomez passes over to Wancho, his brother. And really is going to have to launch one. That's going to be Wancho from way downtown. And not a good offensive set that time for Spain. It will be interesting to see how the Marcus Salt injury affects the Spanish team. Obviously, they're so deep. But he has been pretty much the best player in the last couple of games. Kulagin pulls up. And the push on, is it Oriola or Juancho and Gomez? Oriola, so he picks up his first foul. Two guys here boxing on the ball. No, it's still not enough. Even though it probably should have gone at Hernan Gomez for wrapping his arm around Moskov. That's great. Tries to feed the progress, but Postal drives in, takes a very difficult shot, gets it high off the glass, and scores. I'll tell you what, Kostov just does not take a single playoff. See there, drawing an offensive foul. Absolutely. And probably a little bit underrated, really, Kostov. He plays, look at that, he gets the second on Aaron Gomez. He plays a lot of minutes. Yeah, if, it wasn't, uh, if it wasn't for Shved playing 39 minutes against Serbia, Kostov was the leading minutes guy for this team. You see them there on defense and on offense. Just does everything he needs to do for Bazarevic. So, Willian really Gomez goes out, and Pau Gasol comes in. And a double dribble. And gets it back to Spain. Kulagi just hasn't been the same since that ankle sprain. You gotta admire the effort. Schmidt coming in for him now. Calgus all at the line! So, four points now for Pal Gasol. That's back to Mosgol. Mosgol open. Oh. Nice pass from Rubio. Alley -oop. Alley -oop from Oriola. Yeah, Rubio always has his eyes up. So, the guys are making cuts, backdoor cuts, whatever kind of cuts, he's going to find them. Face 
baseline and he traveled. Yeah, you can get away with that in the NBA, but not over here in Europe. You see the off the dribble pass from Rubio. The timeout will uh, see Oriola again. That's an alley -oop pass and converting. But below the rim alley -oop. Where's the energy going to come from from Russia? You know you're down. You see the stats there. Nine turnovers already, just four assists. So playing pretty sloppy ball. You see a couple backcourt violations already. Unforced turnovers. So the energy and focus is going to be necessary for uh, them to get back to this game. Perfect nine of nine. Spain. We've attempted one here in the second quarter. You have to knock one in from deep. Yeah, Spain, you know, they came into the knockout phases as pretty much dominating every single statistical category. But since the competition has kind of, you know, railed up a bit, those stats have gone down, whether it's been the free, uh, field goal percentage, their assists, you know, their defensive points allowed. It's almost, again, we talked about it, if the group stages impeded them a little bit rather than help them while this Group D team here, Russia, one of two Group D teams in the Final Four. Let's see uh, Sergio Scariola really uh, talking, still animatedly, to Mazzoni, his fellow Italian, who's a referee. And Rodriguez hits the three-pointer. Guard spot, he's been their most consistent guard. Leads the team in assists while also scoring about almost 10 points a game. Our ball goes out of bounds, back over to Spain. Bazarevich. This team uh, in dangerous times here, especially when things like this start happening. Down by 11. See that three by Rodriguez. So that first three for Spain, giving them their biggest lead of the game. And now Powell going to work, turns, scores with the left hand. Powell will not be denied. Crab dribbles towards the middle, drops that baseline, jump hook. It's fundamental post moves. And Antonov goes right past Gus. Oh, but it gets rejected by Oriola. Oriola's waiting for that one. And Zubkov fouls Rodriguez. You see it again. Yes. Smacked it off the backboard. Oh, 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 oh. You got to go much stronger than that if you're Simon Antonov. Seaman uh, Antonov for holding. And really, Scariolo is still uh, having words with Mazzoni. He can't see Scariolo down where he is there. And, now, and then you can see him uh, gesture to the other referee. So it's, it's really become kind of... Uh, Oh, Ooh. look at this. Pau Gasol tried to dunk it. That would have been a highlight real yeah, play. Tough catch. And another turnover for Russia. Shved visibly frustrated as he walks back on defense. That's four turnovers now for Shved. Now Gasol takes the contact and scores. Oh. And he's laughing at the fact that he can't get the foul call, but. Another nice finish from Gasol with the left. He would, I mean, typically in the NBA, you wouldn't probably get that call, wouldn't you? Well, he gets a little yeah, bump. He got, he's exactly. going down the lane. You see Marc Gasol re-emerging out of the locker room. So hopefully he's going to be OK. Spain, uh, 19 points from turnovers, and they've turned it over five times themselves. 
Russia only five points, and they've had 11 turnovers, and that is a big number when you consider you got six minutes to go in the second hey, quarter. Hey, hey, what's your goal? Yeah, Russia man, like probably playing their sloppiest half since that game against it's, it's, Turkey. I, I don't, I don't usually like to talk about refereeing, but I mean, it's uh, certainly Scariola. It seems as if he's come out tonight to make a point. Visibly. Upset over there on the sideline. because Spain was in the bonus with six minutes to go in that first quarter, so, you know, they're getting fouls called for them. You see that huge run already. Looking at the stats coming into the game, the only team stat that Russia had an advantage was average points on turnovers. And that just hasn't mattered here today. Is to that see. a foul though? I don't I don't think so. Well Antonov see right the here. left hand. I mean there was a he did it's bump not it, a, but yeah, it's not a you know no reason for controversy there. And as you said, they got into the bonus early uh, in the first quarter. Russia now with three fouls. They did call the unsportsman like on Kurbanov. You know, refereeing will always be uh, a subject, won't it? Whether it's good or bad. Here's Sved. And rattles in the three-pointer. He's had enough. He's going to come out and take over for Russia. He's done it all tournament long. Now, Fernando Sanamaterio in the corner. And Mateo drives right down the lane. Oriola there for the rebound. And uh, gets the foul called. I, I mean, I am really intrigued by Oriola. Yeah, I was going to say, I know you're a fan of his. He's tall. He's quick. He's really anonymous. I mean, his name now, obviously, because of what he's done with Valencia moving over to Barcelona, it's, it's a much bigger name. But... Yeah, he said 6'9", 6'10". He's not going to help his uh, reputation if he shoots free throws like that. But he's, he's young. Uh, this is both, in fact, but Sanitario gets the rebound. There he is. Rodriguez drives, and Powell Gasol there for the follow. Nobody boxing out Gasol. So 10 points, keeps adding to that total. Yeah, could be, uh, could be playing himself into contention for his final male tournament team. You never know. Seaman Antonov. Free throw attempt. Uh, it goes in and out. And this is both. What's happening now with Spain at the line? Their free throw percentage has uh, dropped down to 9 of 13. They were 9 of 9. Now they're 69%. Back to Fridzen inside. Back up winding down. Fridzen on the baseline. And Moskov. Oh, look at the hustle from Rubio. And the hustle from Fridzen to get down on the ground. And then inside it goes to Moskov. And then he passes out. And it's very interesting. Moskov catches it right under the basket. Look at the hustle there. Always want guys to get on the floor, but then he said Mozgov. Oh, look at this. So Mozgov gets it. Could have turned possibly in shot. But he passes it out to Shved for the open three. And Vart Savage says, just shoot it. And Mozgov said, it. yeah, but he's wide open on the three. So that's, you know, this is a team that possibly uh, 
could get a lot more down low if it wanted. And Mozgov fouled by Santa Materio. So the ball ends up in Mozgov's hands and it's underneath yet again. Nice pass to Fritzen. Shot against Mozgov. Opportunity for, for Shved in Russia to get it back into single digits. Here's Shved into the corner. And Shved launches a three. Tough shot there. And Fritzen uh, harassing. Now the pass up to Wancho Aaron Gomez, and he drives in and draws the foul by Kolstov. That's where he is very dangerous in the open floor. Kostov prevents the easy basket. And also didn't give him room to kind of go up with a lot of momentum because Hernan Gomez is a high flyer. So Marcus Hall is going to go back to the locker room. You can see in the upper right part of your screen, barely. So he will go to the changing room here for the uh, presumably remain there until halftime, through halftime at least. Aaron Gomez, uh, confidence building season with Denver, you would say? Yeah, definitely showed a lot of good things, especially in the second half for a team that was fighting for playoff contention, who actually are expected to be in the playoffs this year if they're able to put all things together. It's tough making the Western Conference playoffs, that's for sure. I'd say all bets are off on all of that. Here's Fritzen uh, from the right corner. And he stepped out of bounds. And again, we love Russia's ball movement, but it's created actually more issues. These guys haven't been able to get shots off. Yeah, it seems like they've actually passed up some better shots to get worse shots. 12 Russian turnovers now, just five for Spain. Navarro. And the pass intercepted. And now Sved has it on the break, and he goes in, and an unsportsmanlike has been called on Ricky Rubio. So it is the second unsportsmanlike foul that's been called. This time it's been called on Spain. And Rubio beside himself. We'll see. Rubio went for the ball, the planes. Caught, caught the arm, Ooh. though, and again, with, when you have a guy with that much momentum. You know, and look at Sved. <laughs> Shved's like, come on. He's just, a, he's just so cool, though, you yeah. know, Shved, he is. Doesn't really react too often. So you like that call as young sportsman like? Well, even though Rubio did go for the ball, it's just it's just too dangerous of a play a lot of times. The guy off his feet. Now, dude, if he, had, if he had to grab the rim, who knows how he could have kind of fallen. And it's not just the fall that should draw the sportsman like. It's yeah. kind of the uh, intention. Shved makes one of two. What a great play defensively from Fritzen. Got the steal and the leak out pass. Yeah, Fritzen was really uh, playing well. He's he Spain uh, in the zone now. So a lot of this against Slovenia didn't really work. So kind of a box in one a little bit. Shved, Shved fumbled it. Santa Materia didn't realize that he could have been off to the races. With Borsevich. And uh, Russia come out of that with just one point. Could have had a five-point swing there. One turn and Gomez. Good! 
just like that, it's back up to 14. Hernan Gomez was the uh, second leading scorer, I believe, after the group phases. He was indeed. Obviously got a lot more minutes. Oh, what City. It's a three on one. And Santa Baterio is going to fin. Oh, he doesn't finish. And Spain, Spain playing a little bit of volleyball there. Yep. Rubio was thinking about an alley pass, but kept it and hands it off to Gasol. And a foul called. Two shots. And Spain's defense. Here you go. Look at this. All ball there initially. Moscow. Moscow definitely raked him there. Ron Savage gets it. It's called for the spike and a clean swipe. But yeah, obviously, uh, Spain was only allowing about 60 points per game before that semifinal. <laughs> defense this half has been more than this and that kind of play. 25 points for Russia. And meanwhile, Powell's uh, free throw stroke has gone AWOL. This is last three. In fact, he's missed all three of his free throws today. And finally, gets one to fall. Spain back to a man. Nine points for Gasol this quarter. Now he's going to play D on Mozgov. And he, gets, he just swats in. So the second block in the last minute for Gasol. San Mateo leaked out, hoping to get the outlet pass. And now to Gasol again, he just turns and lays it up and in. Honestly, I think in the history of basketball, he's one of the best at keeping the ball high. He doesn't bring it down. He receives the, uh, the guard, guard's pass, which makes it so hard to stop. Orncevic, big shot. Big away from Russia a little bit. So I'd like to cut into that deficit even more for the break. So Spain play fast. Navarro with his patented teardrop. And a push called on Russia. Gasol will try to line. Okay. So off the ball foul. Gasol with 13 points, five rebounds, two blocks, as well as two assists in this first half already. Yeah, he's definitely picked up his game, it seems, uh, tonight. So his brother Mark back in the locker room with the ankle injury. And again, he misses the free throw, so now he's one of five. I've, I've seen him have phases like this yeah. with Spain where he struggled to make free throws. Yeah, it's interesting because he's such a skilled player, good shooter, especially from the mid-range. Just two of six. Well, 30 seconds of the first half. Good read. Sergio Rodriguez goes in and lays it up. Off, like not to even contest that one. 17 points to lead now. Hornsevich, pump fake. Over to Fridzen, wide open. Now Spain, another attempt. Rodriguez puts up a three, that's gonna be off. And that's how it finishes. So a very disappointing first half for Russia. Spain, meanwhile. Open up a 17-point lead, despite the loss of Marcus Gasol to an ankle injury. 45-28 in favor of Spain. You see the stats there. Russia just not being able to get enough shots off while Spain doing so much damage inside. And we'll see the turnovers in a second there, but Spain also dominating the class despite Marcus Gasol's absence. And also getting those steals leading to easy opportunities already in that first half.
Spain with 21 points off turnovers. Meanwhile, Russia just six. So they were able to capitalize on those 13 Russian turnovers. And the four blocks have been all pretty incredible blocks right at the rim. Even Moscow getting swatted. So as you look at the highlights, we'll remind you it's 45-28 Spain at halftime. We'll be right back.
45 28 Spain on top of Russia at halftime of the third place game and Martin Gasol back on the court he uh, appeared to injure his ankle or twist his foot or I'm not sure exactly what the injury was but I saw him uh, come back out and one of our TV colleagues went up and asked him how he was doing and he shook his head as if to say yeah I'm okay to go so that's good news here he is and uh, really, it's a big ask for Russia now, trailing by 17 points against the Spanish team that is hell-bent on leaving uh, this competition with another medal, something they, they, they've they done every year uh, for a long time, with the exception of 2005, when they came in fourth place in the of France and Serbia Montenegro. So what hasn't worked tonight for Russia, in your opinion, Josh? Well, obviously, it's more on the on the defensive end already. Paul Gasol just getting too many easy looks to the basket. Um, guys, actually, in general, getting too many looks to the basket. No rim protection, zero blocks for Russia. And the offensive end, a lot of passive play. You know, in any game, you have to be aggressive when you're a basketball player. And they just haven't really done so. Obviously, Shred is the one exception. He's got 12 points. But the number of times we've seen the ball kind of move around the perimeter. Then, you, know, you always hear about passing up a good shot for a great shot. But the guys are passing up great shots for bad shots. And that's just not the way to beat the Spanish team. you got to take the chances they give you. Uh, so overall, a good tournament for Russia. Of course, uh, impressive coming out and beating Greece. Uh, to get to the that game. And Russia also were very impressive in the game before that. So when they, uh, Russia, remember they finished third place. And they came out and really played well against Croatia. They beat Greece, 74 69. They had to come from behind to win that game. They threw about 13 points. And even though they fell behind against Serbia, they battled back and made a real game of it, uh, but ultimately fell 87 to 79. And here they are now. You know, it's tough to bounce back when you go up against a, a Spanish team that's loaded with so many good players, uh, both in terms of experience and talent. It's interesting to see Marcus Gasol out there. I mean, you know, the Memphis Grizzlies training camp starts on Tuesday, September 26th, so he'll have nine days to recover. Obviously, I guess he doesn't think he can do any more damage to that ankle. The rest of the game will get it away, get to retape. So, second half action underway here in Istanbul. Spain leading at 45 28 over Russia, and Juan Carlos Navarro puts up a long jump shot. Comes out, so, he doesn't want to play his last game. Last year basketball game without scoring, but he hasn't so far. And the pointer is good from Andre Kulshevich. Obviously, so much time left in this game. These Russian players really need to leave it all up in the court. Andre Kulshevich is one of the main guys. And the us all. And just uh, didn't quite get it up in time. A little bit soft to see Bazarevich. Side himself on the sideline. And Fridzen was going to shoot it, wasn't, was going to pass it. Finally, they get it to Varsevich. It's too, too late as Gasol goes out on him. Kostov hands it back, or no, passes it over to Varsevich, who steps inside the arc and hits the jump shot. That time, the patience works out in Russia's favor. Back to back shot to Varsevich. Good to see Mark Gasol out. Here's uh, Rubio. And right behind it is good. That's his first basket. Rubio content to be more of a setup man in that first half. Kostov goes up against Rubio. Rubio trying to get the charge. And Shred attempts the three. And Mark Gasol gets the rebound. Rubio playing with a little bit more of a mean streak in this tournament, it seems. And I'm not saying that just because of the grizzly bear alert tattoo. 
Nice yeah, pass. pass to Marcus. Oh, and he goes in for the left-handed slam. You see the grimace. Finish there from Marcus All. Where's the Russian help defense? 16 point lead for Spain. Schmidt again drives in. Passes it out to Barcevich, who's had the hot hand. He drives in. Moskov follows. Can't get it. Now it's Rubio. Open floor. No look to Marcus All. He gets it to Navarro, and La Bamba misses. And Marcus All with the tap. Still struggling to score. That was it right there. It's on a platter, wasn't it? Nice fast break action from Spain. Fritzen in the lane. Moskov with the tap. Nobody's boxing Moskov out. He's getting in there time and time again. See the rail cam. What do you think about that look? Well, Josh, you is that right your in. favorite look? Yeah, it brings the action to you know, your living room or laptop, so good hands for Baron Savage. Uh, time to Terrio. Able to pass it to the corner. Kostov pushes and fouled out on the perimeter by Juan Carlos Navarro. <laughs> to test. Driven off to Costo, hands it off, and Boris Sevic again puts it up and in. Uh, the trees in there putting all some of the Russian players on their shots. Boris Sevic now with 10 points. Rubio, open. It's all bumped by Mozgov. Better at the line, they might have already put this thing away. 
Mozgov fouled by Marcus Saul. Really deep inside position there by Moskov. Moving the bar again. Another look at that. Can't, can't touch it after it hits the backboard. Moskov. These are only the fifth and sixth free throws for Russia. Spain, like you said, has been to the line 20 times already. It's like the Russian fans. So. <laughs> the about. Makes the second. Double trouble when they're both on the court. Didn't get him into the final, though, did it? Uh, Rubio still is one of the first passes in the game. Not to take anything away from Sergio Rodriguez. Yeah, he's always been hailed for his passing. I think uh, he can't just depend on who has the better ball handler and the better passer. What a luxury for Spain all these years to be able to have two guys like that, and obviously. Rubio to kind of continue this path. Now Sergio Rule has a point Oh, Mozgov with a rim rocker. That's what he needs to do. Santa Terry behind the back pass. To Marcus Saul, don't mind if I do. He says he is uh, saying I'm going to be the leading scorer in this game. He's got 21 points. His brother Powell, he's left him in the dust. He's only got 14. Turn and good job, uh, Kerbinov, following up his missed shot. Foul on Oriola. Didn't do too much wrong, Oriola, but lowered his hand. This was Mozgov on his dunk. Kawabunga. Marcus not going to test his ankle on that particular blocking attempt. As you say, Gasol already 11 points in the quarter. Who's been more valuable in this game? Powell's the one who really kind of uh, took it to Russia early to help him build the lead. And uh, Mark has come out and is effectively right now trying to slam the door shut. It's really impressive considering he was in the locker room for most of that second quarter. Yeah, we were worried, weren't we? Here's uh, Kar oh, Kerbinoff with the dunk. He took it all the way. Finally, some aggression from this Russian team. You see Kurbanov, the fake pass, takes off. Two hands slam. A nice little steal, rush on the fast break. Kurbanov nice again. Kurbanov goes up and lays it up. And just like that, Russia come right back and cut that deficit to 60-47. Kurbanov taking a great time to get his first two baskets of the game. Hey, so Russia is saying, not so fast, man. We're still in this one. And Mario is sensing the danger. Vamos the uno. You see the two-point shooting and uh, the three-point shooting. Cuando usted pone el bloqueo, ciego el cuatro y coge el flare aquí, vale? 
¿ok? Hace esto y va al otro lado. Again, you don't want to leave a tournament without a medal if you can. You want to get out and get that semifinal, you're a possible champion. And when you lose the semifinal, you're like, the best you can do is third place. So it can be a tough game to play sometimes. Look at this hustle. Zubkov, as he has the last couple of games for Russia, making a play, and this time it's Kurpinov, who's been relatively quiet, as we talked about in the knockout round, but now he's starting to uh, go back to his uh, Fenerbahce arena form. But, uh, textbook fast break again from Russia. He saw a quick outlet from Zubkov to Kostov, and perfectly placed bounce pass to hit Kurpinov in stride for that layup. Those are the kind of plays that Russia needs to continue to make. Had so many unforced turnovers, but when they're playing the right way, their way. They're so dangerous. And there's still so much time left in this game to get back into it. Marcus Sol backs up Ivlev. Says, what can I do? Frank Gore is one of the best centers in the world. It's not easy. Montreal Gomez replaces Santa Materia. Oriola, back door. And Sanchez does the finish, but guess who's there for the follow? Picks up a foul. Instead, his third. It's almost as if uh, he was pushed into it. He bled. Like that's all. But anyway, Sash today will go to the line for the two. Soft that goes out. There he is, La Bamba. What a lot of incredible moments. The Eurobasket 2011 MVP. Really, he and uh, Jorge Garbajosa were the two guys that ignited Spain in 2006 when Pau Gasol was injured for the final at the FIBA Basketball World Cup in Japan and led him to that resounding victory over Greece. Just uh, a couple days after Greece had beaten the USA, 91-95. And Kostov, three-pointer. And again, getting closer and closer now. And now the good defense. We're on two. Kulagin off to Kostov and missed the layup. He's worried about Mark Gasol's presence. And Oriola is able to get the foul called on Kurbanov. Oh, yes, shoulder to the head. But again, his free throws uh, thing now. Characteristic misses here by Spain. Six shooters. Make the free throws, but now 16 to 25 on the day. Real makes one of two. Wow. Oop, nope, over his head. Deep left. Wanting the foul, but he's not going to get anything. Look, Evil has been raising his shoulders more than anything else here today. Not sure that's who you want to run the bob for. Haven't seen that yet all tournament long. Nice steal by Kulagin. Kulagin takes it down. And then he's bumped by Rodriguez. The Russia seems to have uh, that little bit of oomph in their game again. We saw it against Serbia. They were down double digits, never gave up. They were able to get back to the game and had a chance to take the lead in the fourth quarter on a shred three. They have that resilience. We've seen it already. Uh, makes the 
first. Like you said, if you can get it down to single digits going into the fourth, who knows what can happen in the last 10 minutes. Good as well. So Russia right back in it. See a one, two, one, one press here. That's great. Baseline. I want to foul it to Russia. Shot clock winding down. Good. Chacho. Those shot clock expiring pull up jump shots. Such a better shooter now than he used to be. He really worked on that aspect of his game. Let's re get. And the ball in the corner. Bumps up reverse his direction. Passes to Kerbin off for three. Oriola was running at him. Quickly to Wancho and Gomez, but he misses. And he's fouled. And Azarevich has his hands to his head as if to say, where was the foul on Kurbanov? That is number four. And you see it right here. Kurbanov. Oh, got him. He's going down a little bit on his right wrist. Is that right? No, that's all ball. That's right. That is all ball. So we had to admire the courage to test Wancho down. Technical foul for the Russian bench. Kind of reacting by just standing up because they were so. That's a big play. Over yeah, Everett just kind of looks bemused. Uh, you can't see him now, but over at the uh, commissioner's table. And also, Wancho just wanted to. Hey, hey. Okay, now. Technical free throw. So instead of getting a clean block, it could turn into another four or five point trip for Spain. Tough break for the Russians. Single point, 66-55 after three. Russia did not go away, scored uh, 27 points in that quarter. 
She almost surpassed her whole first half output. Curving on the dunk. There is again. That, that, that tentacle foul is going to be. Could end up being the difference. I mean, Russia had the momentum. We're playing great defense. And that kind of play really gives you momentum. Then you know you're putting them on the line for a free free throw. Hey, hey. You understand the word aggressive in Russian. By the halftime, they have to be aggressive. Evgeny Babarin has come into the game. Hopefully, he can get a breakaway. Right, fourth quarter action underway here in the third place game. Also trying to uh, get it into single digits. Trailing by 11. Kostov to Babarin. Over to Kuligan. Inside to Ivlev. Pump fake. And he goes up for the two-handed jam. Nice move from Ivlev. Able to get Gasol off his feet with the fake. Semi-strong finish. Well, Gasol's blocked some shots today. And Ivlev, uh, nevertheless, went up. With him uh, bearing down on him. Here's uh, Rodriguez. And Rodriguez scores. Nice shot. Yeah. Move up to Sergio. Saw the behind the back dribble to escape the defense. Fabrin in the game. Ivlev, Zukov, Kostov, and Delagan. Here's Zukov. Oh, what an athletic play of the night. Misses badly. And now Spain have it back. Russia trying to play fast. See you there. Rodriguez, a little pro hop to finish. Now Rodriguez takes the bump by Iblev out of the perimeter. This is fourth. Number 18 is my Fourth person by the team scorers. Russian CDG take a mile. And it wrong there. Threw it off the glass. That's all couldn't catch it. Post off. Goes around Sastre and a foul on Sastre. Number Rodriguez just off target with the foul. Really trying to put pressure on his defense. Balls go back in for Evelyn. Pointer no good from Zubkov and up ahead to Oriola. Tried to score with an alley oop. And actually, that was the right place. Should have called it and come down with it. Babarin for three. Good. Point swing. Now, Babarin hasn't done much offensively throughout the tournament. First points actually of the entire tournament. Time and now. Nice corner three from Abbott. So, see a Scariolo now bringing in, they've got two point guards, both Rodriguez and Rubio. They brought Rubio back into the game. And the foul call, is it on Babarin? It is. Rubio actually initiated the contact. I think he got bumped, though, initially right. by Babarin. He went up to the referee and said something. Number four, Rodriguez. 
Over to Oriola for three. Good! Oriola uh, sort of redeems himself after that. Failure to score with that alley oop on the fast break. Moscow going right at Powell. And just his way up there. Man, you can do that every time. Moscow is displacing Powell. Out the Rubio pulls up in the lane, gets it to go. Fourth points. Goes it back to Zubkov. And a bump and a foul down low. How long do you go with Shmed on the bench if you're Bazarevich? I think he needs uh, this team out here for his defensive intensity. See the question. Uh, foul call on Sastre. And jump shot. No good by Fridzik. He's played a lot of minutes at the Eurobasket Shred. Badman's hardly played at all, but he's getting some uh, vital minutes here. Pavisal goes right at Mozgov, a little pump fake, and scores. Such control. 16 points now for Powell. Tulagin. Rodriguez. Thought about passing, and takes it all the way, and misses. Also from Moscow to get that defensive rebound. Bulagin drives, puts it up and in, scores. Boy, he abused Sastre on that one. He's been a great one-on-one -on -one player. Look at Kirilenko applauding. Bulagin again really competing out there on one ankle. Look at this. Spins. Goes up. Oh, it's actually got a lot of ball there. Put him in a spin cycle. That's a... Uh, <laughs> so we say. I know. So we say. Oh, he can't complete the in one, though. Mark. I guess all in the game. So twin towers for Spain. So you would think they're going to go down, but Fridzik takes it away. And now unsportsmanlike foul called on Rubio, who committed the foul. Last man back. He was going to go in for a, a layup. Watch this. Fridzik kind of fouled him there initially. Doesn't really get any of the ball in his initial reach. Is that a harsh unsportsmanlike? Anyway, Spain with a 10-point lead. Potential five-point trip down the floor here. Fritzen can make his free throws. And Russia hits a three. Rubio's going to come out of the game. That's five. Oh, he's got, he's got a, the board with four up top. Wow. Must have... Uh, Primary ball handlers. Uh, Fritz makes the first one. How big is that missed free throw from Kulagin on the three point play opportunity now? All free throw misses are good. Fritz, who really is the player, in my opinion, didn't really lift his game. Rubio actually is coming back to the bench now. Okay. That's an explanation. Some things on the stretch bench. And an offensive foul called on Zubkov. Sastre goes back in. Zubkov to try to close the elevator doors. Double screen. One of that three. Said 
something. But we thought, yeah, strange. The assistant coach is uh, talking to the commissioner about events that have led Ricky Rubio to be ushered or to be told to go to the locker room. Very strange. Calvisol gets in, turns and scores. Get away with an extra step there, perhaps, but again, another strong move from Powell. 18 points. Printon on the baseline. Good. He's starting to heat up. And Schmidt still on the bench. And Powell Gasol gets it again. And it's the short one. And Russia. Find out what's happening here. That's course for Mike Foul. Two free throws. Second disqualified. So. Still only registered. Oh, the block from Gasol. Terrific play. And now the jump shot from Kulagin, the three-pointer. Five-point game, Jeff. Moscow did a great job recollecting the ball there after getting blocked. Once a two-point goaltending, but they got three points out of the session. Persigue, no lo cortes. Ahora, vea, en defensa han sido cosas de balón suelto, rebote, saltar a fina. Solo atiendo lo que hacemos. Por un poco más de concentración, vamos a llevar al final de posesión y punteamos los tiros. I know that we now have a game on our hands with this bronze medal. Russia able to get back with Shred on the bench and the Gasol brothers finding 39 points already. We talked about the Russian resiliency. We saw it. Most of their games have been close. So, yeah, we just had the confirmation that the reason why Rubio, who only has four fouls, has been disqualified is because he picked up two unsportsmanlike fouls. So, anyway, it's so, unfortunate for him and Spain. So, a little bit of adversity for Spain. And I could argue that was a tough unsportsmanlike on Rubio. Now, Marcus all misses, and the long rebound chased down by Sastre and Russia. They've got the look of a team that wants to uh, wants blood right now. They are getting after it. Sastre and Kuragin in front of the outlet. Fritzen and goes in and scores. Gets it back to a three-point deficit. So really a bizarre turn of events. Not only with the comeback, but with the Rubio eje uh, ejection. Pau Gasol, silky smooth jump shot from the line. Hands all over his face. Gasol still knocks it down, and now both Gasol brothers with 20 plus points. We saw that Spain led by as many as 18 points in the game. Russia have never led. Russia was down 17 at halftime. Looked off for three. Good! Boy, look at the. Look on the faces of the Russian players. They believe right now they can win it. Urbanov is now fouled out. He reached in. Spain leading 78-76. And Santa 
Rosario goes to the line. And again, I'm just amazed at the fact that Vazarevich has elected to keep Shvet on the bench. One of the candidates for MVP, potential All-Star 5, obviously we talked about that, but it's paid off though. It has. It's made you stick to what's, what, what's worked. And only one of two, but Gasol gets the offensive oh. rebound. Oh, what a blow for Russia. Mozgov not able to box out Gasol. And they end up getting a three-point play. So timeout. A tough break there for Russia. Again, free throw offensive rebounds are backbreakers, especially in the game. See the score by quarter. Russia having an incredible. So 81 76, and that was a, a backbreaker. Turnovers by quarter. Four by Spain to the third, which uh, allowed them to start chipping away of uh, the Russians. And protecting the ball right now is crucial. Zukov three, remember, there's one point where Spain had a 19-0 advantage in points off turnovers. That's now become 23 to 15. So Russia able to force some more pressure defensively and create some easy baskets. Point game now. Two and a half minutes to play. Two and a half, and uh, every possession vital for Russia. As the Rebbe is talking to Shved, oh, the turnover into the hands of Rodriguez. Rodriguez gets it back to Gasol. He drives in the lane and draws the foul. Execution from Russia. Shred with a nice, nice pass inside the Moscow with a deep position on both Gasol brothers. Finish through contact. Down to four. So, Russia not going away, not going quietly. Rodriguez crosses mid-court. Russia. Trying to complete what would be a famous comeback. Can Spain hold them off. Gasol has it. And has the ball knocked out of his hands. Called stop. Over to Fridzen. Wide open. Misses everything. Set the backboard. And up it goes to Santa Materio for the dunk. So many strange sequences we've seen in this fourth quarter already. Schmidt back in, puts up a three. 
And Rodriguez snatches it out of the air. He's going to race down, gives it to Kyle Gazelle, and scores on the runner, showing he can get up and down the floor. Gasol takes his tally to 24 points. Copyright infringement. Oh, uh, sorry. <laughs> oh, gosh. What a response from Spain, though, in this last couple possessions. Able to reel off four straight points, two dunks, uncontested. Let's listen to what Coach Bazarevich has to say. Hey, Look at the numbers, team. the points in the paint. Spain, four, superior, 22 uh, uh, of 36. Timofey is this. Schwedt is this. Vrancevich is this. And Kulagin is this. Cut. Cut. So Mark Gasol, 24 points, uh, sorry, 23 points, but Powell, 24 and 10. You see the ability to run down the floor. Still so athletic at 37 years of age. Copyright infringement. That was funny, I have to say. Okay, so you're right, I admit it. I'll pay you later. Kostov, inbounds of Despair. And Kovstov for three, got a good look, strapping for the for the ball, and it's Marcus Gasol gets it, and then he uh, probably caught Varnsevich with a with a hand. Two fouls on him, Bazarevich. This game uh, steering towards disappointment for his team. Look at Gasol here, watch his left hand. Kulagin has shown real toughness here this after, this, uh, tonight, sorry. Hit the big three. And Marcus Hull now, both he and Powell have 24 points. And if this is their last game together, what a way to go out. And he makes the second. So I don't know. I mean, yeah, I don't. I don't think it's the last that we've seen of Powell Personal. Certainly says he's going to evaluate things moving forward. Yeah, his production definitely tells otherwise. Schmidt to Golagin from the left corner. Good. Drops it in. Back to seven points. The deficit. And uh, Sastre exits the game. Navarro comes back in. And Navarro, is, despite his uh, struggle, still 100% from the free throw line. And the pass up to Santa Materio. And Navarro, the final minute, perhaps of his international career, back in the game. And the ball thrown out of bounds by Mark Gasol. Doors just slightly left open there for Russia. As Spain turns the ball over. Last minute. So Russia, having trailed by as many as 18 points, you see the uh, fouls they've committed, the free throws for both teams. Spain getting to the line a lot more. They want, uh, you wouldn't know, by the way, they've uh, really lost their own sidelines about uh, a lot of calls tonight. And uh, got a seven-point lead. Still some work to do here. Just want to highlight Sergio Rodriguez. 14 points, nine assists, three steals. He's played a great game. So the Gasol brothers have scored 49 of Spain's 89 points. These Powell's got 24 and 10. So 
46.6 seconds remains. And the pass uh, intended for Vorn Savage, but Pau Gasol knocks it away. And the reach and the foul on Russia. That play might work on a number of teams, but Pau Gasol and Marcus Gasol just too experienced, too smart. Back up to an eight-point lead now. Rodriguez has uh, had a nice game himself here. 15 points, nine assists. So almost uh, a double-double for him. Yeah, 16 points. Subcop for three. And behind the back to Schved. He puts up another three, hits it. Six Up point ahead game. to Gasol again, runs the floor and dunks it. And he says, we're going to have some medals hung around our neck after this one, folks. Block it. Marcevic sees the shot clock winding down with the game clock, and that might just be it. Spain leading 93-85. It has been a hard-fought encounter. And Bazarevich had a great Eurobasket Russia. They got nothing to be ashamed of. They've really come out and fought. Uh, but they have uh, fallen to Spain, who for the second time, second year in a row, have uh, reached the podium. They reached the Olympics last year, and they win this one 93-85. Yeah, Russia with a valiant effort in that game. Honestly, they could have gone away after halftime, down 17 at the half. Really fought back, put on a put up a lot of points. By the way, Rubio is now he emerged from the locker room, so he hasn't been banished for good. He's got the two uh, sportsman like fouls. Even that first one was on uh, Shred's breakaway when he tried to contest that dunk. So either he is sportsman like or that unsportsman like. Obviously, Rubio not a dirty player in any way, shape, or form, but. Tough call to go his way. Luckily, his teammates pulled it out. So, tough, uh, tough game for Russia. They showed plenty of fight. Uh, falling behind by 18 and, and coming back. And there you see Juan Carlos Navarro, La Bamba, who was the Eurobasket 2011 MVP. Had the phenomenal uh, career for Spain. It's his last game with the national team. Uh, numbers as well. Russia 14 threes. Still not enough. 26 points from the foul line, obviously dominating the class, but those 28 assists from Russia, again, strong second half performance. So Russia, Ru Russian basketball seems to be uh, back on track with this loss. And you can see Navarro uh, in front of him there by his teammates. There's a uh, little celebration. Seems like it's good to see the smiles back on the, the faces of Spain's faces. Smiles back on the faces, rather, of Spain's players. They've, uh, Really were beaten soundly in the semifinal by Slovenia. And we're going to have the, uh, the final stats here of all the players. We're getting ready for the uh, award ceremony for the bronze medal. So Pau Gasol had 26 points. Mark Gasol had 25. Schmidt had the 18. Uh, despite not playing much of the fourth quarter. And that's a. Did you call that a brave decision by Bazarevich, or I guess it's just a smart decision because uh, it worked. He needed some intensity out there on defense to help him come back. I mean, the guys that got the host of the game were kind of trusted, but then they kind of ran out of gas a little bit as well. They did an all-out effort. Tato. Tato. Russia had a chance, cut it down to two, just like they did against Serbia. Just could never get over that hump. This is the odd situation where you have a team, most likely in Spain, who didn't even get to the final. They won the third place game. They're going to move to your basket. Your note for the team that loses in the final. And we always say second place is the first loser. That's right. And a silver medal is nothing to be ashamed of in a competition as prestigious as the Eurobasket. I mean, do you think uh, if they could go back in this tournament and do anything differently uh, in that Slovenia game? Would they have done anything different? I don't know what it would have, what would have mattered, to be honest. Slovenia was just 
executing perfect game against Spain. Really executing the game plan. See the Spanish players. I think it's more, in a way, as you see Pau Gasol. That's the girlfriend. And uh, there's, there's his brother Mark with him. That's uh, Mark's uh, daughter. I think it is. She was born in 2014. So we are having the award ceremony here. Also, we have a regional director of Europe, Mr. Kamil Novak, and uh, also Secretary General and IOC member uh, Patrick Bauman will be out there to present the, uh, the bronze medals.
be an action in all the crowd to be able to watch their team play all over the world. So make sure you uh, remember that aspect. And we'll be interested to see who comes out and plays for Spain. So anyway, that's it, folks. Um, as we look at the highlights, Josh, any last comments on uh, Spain and Russia? Well, obviously, Russia, the team that we've probably seen the most in this tournament, had a great run, played some great basketball. They were you know, defeated by a, a powerful Spanish armada here tonight. How and Marcus all combined with 51 points, showing you why they are legends in the European game. So Alexei Shved had a fantastic uh, tournament for Russia. And after two consecutive uh, Eurobasket group phase exits, Russia have come back strong at this Eurobasket, the 2014 Eurobasket. They played all of their games in Istanbul, and they have uh, finished fourth. So I think all in all, a step forward for Russian basketball. Their coach, Sergei Bazarevich, uh, the Russian Basketball Federation president, but, uh, now he has an important role as well with that, with that situation. And I guess uh, Josh will cut it here then. One last time, 93-85, Spain win the bronze medal over Russia. Thanks for watching, everybody. Make sure to tune in uh, for the title match yeah, coming up next. One. The big one. Slovenia against Serbia.